روی به تمام دوستان خوب ایرانی ما همه جای دنیا که هستین امیدوارم خوب و سلامت باشین یه ویدیو کوچولو براتون درست کردم چون همونطور که میدونی یه دو سال پیش اتفاق بزرگی برای من افتاده بود توی هاپ ما که موتورش منفجر شده بود از سان فرانسیسکو به هوایی داشتیم میرفتیم که ما تونستیم خوشبختانه با کمک دوستای دیگه هم خلبانای دیگه این هاپ ما رو کنترل بکنیم و به هوایی برسونیم و NTSB National Transportation Safety Board تقریبا دو سال طول کشید که بیاد و نظرشون رو بگه که چه اتفاقی اون بالا افتاد و رو همین حساب این ماه پیش نظرشون رو گفتن که این اتفاقی که اون بالا افتاد موتور که منفجر شده بود دلیلش این بود که یکی از این بلید یا فن بلید های موتور سمت راست یک کرک یا یک کرک خیلی کوچیک داشت که اینسپکتور های پرات ویدنی اون کمپانی که موتور رو درست میکنه اونو میس کرده بودن اونو ندیده بودن فکر کردن که یه خط نازکی که اون پایین هست فکر کردن که رنگه بعد رو همین حساب بعد از چند سال که این هپ ما پرواز کرده بود و متوجه نشده بودن اینو این اتفاق بالا افتاد این پروانه یا بلید سپریت شد و اون اتفاق خیلی وحشتناک برای ما اتفاق افتاد رو همه حساب من یه انیمیشن درست کرده بودیم برای الپا ایرلاین پایلت اسوسییشن و یونایتد ایرلاینز چون اتفاقی که اون بالا افتاد انقدر بد بود علاوه این که فشاری که به هاپ ما آورده بود اینو نمیتونن خلبانا توی سیمولیتور چیز بکنن پرکتیس بکنن یا بتونن بهشون نشون بدن چه اتفاقی افتاد چون انقدر فشار به هاپ ما زیاد بود و شیکینگ یا هاپ ما رو تکون میداد که این پایه هایی که سیمولیتر که هایدرولیک هست به زمین وصله اونو داشت میشکندش یعنی از زمین داشت میکندش رو هم حساب من یه انیمیشن درست کردم که به خلابانا برای یونایتد و تمام شرکت های دیگه اون اتفاق ها برایشون شهر بدیم چه اتفاق افتاد اون بالا که اینا بتونن از تجربه ما استفاده بکنن چون نمیتونن پرکتیس بکنن از تجربه من استفاده بتونن بکنن و اون بالا که هستن تو این فکر باشن که خدای نکرده اون اتفاق براشون بیفته چطوری بتونن هاپ ما رو کنترل کنن پس این یه ویدیو 12 دقیقه ای هستش که بعد از صحبت من برای شما انجام خواهد شد یعنی نشون داد خواهد شد دوستای خوب ما اینجا تو تیممون اینو ترجمه به فارسی کردن انگلیسیه ولی ترجمه به فارسیش هست و امیدوارم که شما خوشتون بیاد و امیدوارم که تمام خلبانای عالی ایران بتونن اینو به هم دیگه نشون بدن و از این اتفاق که اون بالا افتاد یه تجربه که من گرفتم بتونم بهشون برسونم که خدای نکرده اگر یک بار یه همچه اتفاق هم برای اون افتاد اقلا یکم پرپرتر باشن قربان شما امیدوارم که این ویدیو خوشتون بیاد و تا اینکه یه ویدیو دیگه بعدا براتون میذارم امیدوارم خوشتون بیاد خداحافظ It was a scare in the air for passengers on board a United Airlines flight from San Francisco to Honolulu. We were the first to tell you about this through a push alert. Passengers told us about 40 minutes before they were about to land, the cover fell off one of the engines. On February 13, 2018, Captain Christopher Benham was scheduled to fly United Airlines Flight 1175 from San Francisco to Honolulu. Captain Benham met with First Officer Paul Ayers in the San Francisco Flight Office and they went through the paperwork for their flight. Then Captain Benham briefed Chief Purser Cecilia about the flight time, the altitude, and the weather for Honolulu. Newly qualified 777 First Officer Ed Gagrin asked for permission to ride in the cockpit, and it was granted. Captain Benham asked co-pilot Paul if he would like to fly the first leg to Honolulu, and Paul accepted. Then Captain Benham briefed the passengers on board. Once all passengers were boarded, Captain Benham and co-pilot Paul went through all pre-flight and before pushback checklists. 
Paul got clearance from ground control at 128.1. Paul started the engines and performed the start engine checklist. Since Paul was flying the first leg, Captain Benham confirmed clearance from the tower on 120.5. Paul brought the nose up and applied back pressure. The pilots contacted HCF, Honolulu Control Frequency, and checked in. They got the weather updates from the computer, which was 1,000 feet overcast and 10 miles visibility, and the temperature was 70 degrees. Captain Benham performed a descent checklist and left the cockpit to use the bathroom. Just three minutes after Captain Benham returned from the bathroom, a sudden, huge explosion shook the entire airplane. started to shake vigorously and at the same time both the autopilot and the auto throttle disconnected. All instruments were hazy to see for the pilots due to the extreme shaking of the aircraft. The airplane rolled to the right at a 40 degree bank at the flight level of 360 or 36,000 feet and at Mach 0.83. The entire airplane became uncontrollable. The airplane was shaking so violently that both pilots had to scream at the top of their lungs just to communicate. The noise in the cockpit was so loud that it sounded like a metal building collapsing at the sound of twisting and crushing metal. As Captain Benham struggled to bring the aircraft back to level altitude, he asked for Paul's help in pushing the nose over to break the angle of attack. Both Paul and Captain Benham put their hands on the controls to go to a full deflection while adding full throttle to keep the airspeed from decaying to stabilize the aircraft. Captain Benham pushed the left rudder and turned the left failure on to stop the rolling. Captain Benham had to find a balance point to keep the airplane flying and to keep it from falling into the ocean. Luckily, Captain Benham had done acrobatic flying throughout his 40-year aviation career. Not knowing what was going wrong with his jet, Captain Benham used his natural instincts to stabilize the altitude and the aircraft roll. He pushed the nose over and the aircraft rolled back to the left towards level flight. For the first 30 seconds, Captain Benham and his co-pilots did not know what was going on with the jet. Even though both engine instruments were reading normally, the reason for the aircraft's instability was unclear. After 30 seconds after the initial impact, the right engine instrument indicator went blank. Realizing the situation, Captain Benham knew the airplane had lost its right engine, but he could not understand why there was still violent shaking. Captain Benham commanded Paul to take immediate action and to start performing a severe engine damage checklist. However, the cockpit was shaking so violently that Paul could not push the ECL or the electronic checklist button. Captain Benham then asked Paul to take immediate action. Working together, Captain Benham, Paul, and Ed went through the confirmation for the checklist. Captain Benham asked Paul to shut down the right engine. Over the Pacific, 200 miles from Honolulu, with no place to land, Paul shut down the 777 engine. On a scale from 1 to 10, the initial vibration and shaking of the aircraft was rated at 15 by Captain Benham, but after shutting the right engine down, that vibration dropped to level 7. It stayed at that level until the plane landed. Captain Benham delegated Ed to contact Honolulu Control Facility and to declare an emergency. The aircraft was not behaving normally. 
Captain Venom had to push the left engine throttle all the way to the max just to maintain a shallow rate of descent at 1,200 feet per minute. Captain Benham asked Paul to run the drift down checklist and he asked Ed to get vectors directly to Honolulu International while Captain Benham flew the airplane on one engine. As the plane descended to flight level 330, they entered the clouds. Forced to fly IFR, or IMC, while descending and reducing the airspeed to 241 knots, the aircraft began to buffet and to stall. All the numbers from the textbooks were useless to Captain Venom at that particular point because the plane was aerodynamically compromised due to the disruption of airflow over the right wing. Captain Venom learned if the nose was pushed down to gain more airspeed, landing in Honolulu would not be possible. On the other hand, pushing the nose up to reduce airspeed will make the plane easier to stall in midair. Captain Benham found the sweet spot between 245 and 255 knots, which was an ideal envelope to fly the airplane without stalling or having the airplane tear itself apart. Later, Captain Benham explained that flying the airplane in that particular way was like balancing a plate on the top of his fingers while balancing a ball bearing in the center of the plate. Later on, Captain Benham said that he was pulling 90,000 pounds of thrust on the left engine, but on the right side, it felt like an open barn door with air zooming through it. He also said that since he was unable to maintain altitude, the ride would be a one-shot approach and landing in Honolulu. Over and over again, Captain Benham calculated altitude, airspeed, and distance. Altitude, airspeed, and distance. Captain Benham asked Paul to re-engage the autopilot and the auto throttle for tack. Unfortunately, when Paul tried to do that, he discovered that the controls were down. Without being able to engage the autopilot and the auto throttle, Captain Benham was forced to hand fly the plane all the way to Honolulu. Captain Benham informed Cecilia about the problems with the right engine and also said that there were some control issues which might necessitate ditching the plane in the ocean. Captain Benham then instructed her to prepare the passengers for that possibility. Ed was asked by the captain to go back to talk, comfort, and coordinate with the flight attendants and to take a picture of the right engine so that the pilots could understand what the problem was. Nobody really understood what happened. Nobody knew why the plane was shaking so violently. No one knew why it took maximum thrust just to maintain a shallow descent. Ed took a short video of the right engine and then he showed the clip to the pilots. Now they understood that the cowling had been ripped off the engine and was separated from the aircraft. The video showed that the engine was no longer contained now the pilots knew that the aerodynamics of the airplane were compromised. Captain Benham asked Ed to use SATCOM and contact dispatch at United Airlines Network Operations Center, or NOC. Upon contacting NOC, Ed informed the captain that dispatch was on the line and returned working with Paul on the checklists. Captain Benham informed dispatch about their situation and asked them to notify the Honolulu station. Captain Benham flew the aircraft at a higher speed and higher altitude as they got close to approach so there would be no control issues when the plane got close to the ground and to the runway. Paul was asked to set the flaps to one and he complied. There was a huge sigh of relief when the flaps engaged and the green light came on in the airplane. The captain asked for gear down from Paul and Paul complied. Then Paul briefed the captain about the go-around procedures. Captain Benham said to Paul that today there would be no go-around. The captain asked Paul to put the gear down and Paul complied. The gear came down and locked and the pilots were extremely grateful. They then chose flaps 5 and 15 and kept the airspeed around 180 knots on the short final. Eight 
right, and we're on emergency aircraft. Five, runway eight right, there, goodbye. Turn to land uh, eight right now, 1175 heavy, and if you haven't already, roll the fire truck. Okay, 1175 heavy, they will be standing by. Thank you. They finally went to flaps 20 and made a successful, smooth landing. In United 1175 Mercy, we will exit at uh, Romeo Golf. United 1175 Heavy, Roger. Nice job, guys. After landing and stopping the aircraft, Paul said to the captain that he could let go of the controls. Captain Venom then realized that for the last 40 minutes, he had never taken his left hand off the yoke, nor had he taken his right hand off the throttle. Captain Benham still flies with United Airlines. He's been doing so for more than 30 years. The National Transportation Safety Board is still investigating the cause of why the engine cover came off.